Good evening. Welcome to Inside Fitchburg. I think we have a little mic situation. Oh, there we go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> woo! Um, good evening. Welcome to Inside Fitchburg. Welcome to Fitchburg Access Television. I'm Joanne Hughes. We've got a really good show for you tonight. Um, but first, I want to tell you about some of the things that are coming up around town at Fitchburg High School on Thursday and Friday, tomorrow night and Friday night. The Fitchburg High School Drama Club presents Comedia Delight. And if somebody could get the teleprompter going, I'll give you the rest of the information. Um, it's at 7 o'clock on um, both evenings at the High School Thank You Auditorium. And tickets are only $5, free for seniors and kids under 12. Uh, free for seniors and kids under 12. And they're all available at the door. So on Sunday from 8 to 11.30, uh, the Rotary Clubs of Fitchburg and Lemonster are holding the 20th annual Breakfast for the Bands at Fitchburg High School Cafeteria. This is a wonderful event which raises money for both high school bands. They've been doing it for 20 years. Mm. Fitchburg State University from Wednesday tonight till Sunday. The importance of being earnest at McKay School Theatre called Fitchburg State University for times. It's a free admission. Stratton Players 90th season presents A Murder is Announced by Agatha Christie. December 5th, 6th, and 7th, and the 12th, 13th, and 14th, Friday and Saturday at 8 o'clock, and Sunday at 2 o'clock at the Unitarian Church at the Upper Common. Also, tea with Miss Marple, if you're an Agatha Christie fan. Uh, you don't want to miss that at the Fay Club, the 29th of November from 3 to 5, and this is a fundraiser for Stratton's new theater. The New Players Theatre Guild presents Coming Home to Christmas, a fairy tale Christmas celebration, December 12th, 13th, 14th, 19th, 20th, 21st, Friday and Saturday at 7.30, Sunday at 2 o'clock, and that's at the New Players Theatre Guild Center for the Performing Arts on 15 Rollstone Street. Fitchburg Public Library, December 1st, has their monthly book sale, and from December 8th to the 20th is the Nancy Project Annual Hat and Scarf Sale. Knit and crochet at the library Thursdays from 1 to 3. The Lego Club starts at 3.30 on Thursdays. And uh, later on, we'll be talking about the new exhibit at Fitchburg Art Museum. One Language is no, Never Enough is the one that's been there, and now a new exhibit called Global Africa. Uh, now we'll have uh, somebody from the Art Museum talking to us, but tonight we're going to, first half of the show, we're going to talk about the Fitchburg Historical Society's annual holiday house tour, and I'd like to welcome Shirley Wagner and Kathy Cragen, who are both on the committee for putting together this year's house tour. It's a great event. It's an awful lot of fun. Um, it's beautiful houses. And Kathy, you were saying, you know, Fitchburg has such a a rich vein of architectural gems, and, um, and, and they're all dressed up for the holidays. So what could be a better thing to do on December 6th? 6th. 6th. Um, from 11, 11 to 4. 11 to 4. OK, we got that part out of the way. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about what we're going to see this year. Well, we always see a combination of private and public buildings. And we have six homes this year, six okay. private homes. And then we have four buildings that we're considering a public, although one of them is a funeral home in Cleghorn. Um, so it's a combination of public-private. Yeah. And Kathy's going to, I think, talk first about the, the homes that are from the 18th and 19th century okay. that we get to see, because we like to see a range of years of architecture in Fitchburg as well. Yeah, I think that's nice because it keeps things mixed up a little bit. And I think it's fun to c compare and contrast. You know, you see one house on the tour and then you see something else that's from a different period. It's interesting, like how, what's the same and what's different. Well, we have um, some old favorites this year. The, the uh, theme from the Historical Society this year is Home for the Holidays. And so um, this is the 10th year we, Bill McSheehy has run the house tours for the Historical Society. And we've got some old favorites. Vibe Morin's is an old favorite, and that's on 5th Mass Turnpike. Uh -huh. It's a very early house. It was 1825, post and beam, and it's got beehive Dutch ovens that she actually still cooks in. Um, it's very primitive when you go inside, and I think the genius of the house is that it's got all the modern conveniences, but they're kind of very uniquely hidden mm -hmm. in the house. And across the street, which, which must be awfully hard to do. It is. I mean, that takes a great deal of 
not only um, uh, genius, I suppose, but good planning, but also um, a strength of will to, because it's going to be that much harder to get those appliances and things that we need and want in this day and age mm -hmm. to be a part of it and yet not sticking out like jump out uh, at yeah you. yes it, it when you go in it's re quite remarkable but you know it's it's definitely a modern house and Vi Moran lives in it yeah and, you know enjoys yeah. it yeah and I think that's one of the unique things about yeah. that she's house. not out back no. pumping the water <laughs> she doesn't have a well and she and doesn't have an like outhouse that. or yeah. anything okay. like that. Yeah. um across the street is the Goudreau Joan and Rod Goudreau's house and that house is actually an earlier house. It's 1780. Hmm. It was the Daniel Harris house, and he was in the Revolutionary War in the War of 1812. Ah. And that house has um, beautiful um, pegged floors. It's got fireplaces as well. It's a very comfortable house when you go in that, and that's an old favorite. So those are two houses that had been on the house tour. I think they were both on at the same time, and probably about four years ago. Okay. Um, the next house that has never been on, this is a new one. It's Pat and Mike Joubert's house on Westminster Hill Road. Mm -hmm. And uh, this house was uh, believed to be um, a stagecoach stop from Boston to Keene. Oh. And um, I haven't been in the house, but um, the reports are that it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And that each room is very meticulously, has a, has a, a certain... Um, uh, theme to it uh -huh. and um, I think the three floors are open it's it's quite a nice house now on it, it that's the same street um, that the uh, the old Dean Tavern is on isn't it at Westminster Hill Road yeah could be is it could is be. that because it's yes it's way almost out. almost yes. into or is or is the Dean Tavern on Ashburnham Hill Road now I can't remember well it, when you drive I drove up there to, yeah you know because I like to know where the houses yeah, are to at right, least speak to them right and it looks like you're going into Ashburnham yeah but, you know it, it's very far out because I remember mm -hmm. about that house and that was on well it was it, it, my mother's been gone almost six years and I remember going there with her okay. and in fact she used to work with the um, matriarch of that family oh, really? when because uh, I guess it's been in the same family for years and years and I don't mean to get off on the track but but what I remember about that and it surprised me because it's such a hill mm -hmm. is that that was a main road to Keen. going west mm -hmm. and yes. northwest and yes. it was it was you know again I suppose it had you know I always thought well that was the stagecoach mm -hmm. stop or the inn whatever but there had to be more than one if there right. were a lot of travelers really? they couldn't necessarily fit into one but uh, it couldn't have been an easy road because it isn't easy now yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing that yeah. amazes yeah. me is that um, it went up and over that hill Mm -hmm. But um, I can't imagine what brakes they had on those stagecoaches, well, but they had to have something, something, so yeah, right. Anyway, well, so, that's, we, so that's the Joubert's house on Westminster Joubert's. Hill Road. And those are our early houses, and then we jump to um, the Martell House, which is um, a house that I think a lot of people are going to want to see. It's off Blossom Street. That's a 1913, 1914 house, and it was built um, by an architect, Robert Purden, from Boston, and it was this built for the Simon Saw and Steel, um, Clifford Kingsley Simons. Hmm. And then the Cookman family uh, purchased it in 1935, and Nadine is that's her family. Oh. And so she's always lived in that house. Oh, no kidding. But that house has never been on the tour before. Yeah. And so I think that will be that a That really will be interesting yeah. to well, see. They, I heard it's a beautiful home. Yeah. It has five working fireplaces, wow. and it has leaded doors in the library, and um, butler's pantry and it's a real old mansion it's a it's a beautiful yeah home. and so. to be designed by an architect a hundred years ago mm -hmm. um, I'm sure it was probably a state-of-the-art sort of house at that time you I'm know sure up, right. up to the best of everything at that point well it's so you know it, it's so obscure from the road you, mm, see you it can't really of. yeah you can see the roof basically yeah, but they That's, have beautiful grounds that go with it as yeah. well so hopefully we'll have a good day oh good about the same time period, around uh, 1911, the McGowan home was built on at 11, 111 Ross Street, mm -hmm. which is kind of down the hill, down the hill from where I live, uh -huh. um, and across the street. <laughs> and that was built. Uh, the architect who designed that home was H. M. Francis oh. and Sons. So that's one of the H. M. Francis. An H. M. Francis for people Building. who maybe don't yep. a remember home. is mm -hmm. is is really Fitchburg's famous premier architect. Premier architect. Mm -hmm. Premier architect. Absolutely. So that house has craftsman and colonial revival styles in it. It has original board and batten wainscoting. 
It has a coffered ceiling in the entryway. It has crown molding on it and slate baseboards and a canvas ceiling oh. and a mural that was painted by a Victorian Impressionist that I think people will be interested in seeing. When was that built, Shirley? 1911. Okay. Wow. Right. So that should be a lovely house to visit. I think one of the houses that another house that everybody is dying to get inside of is the President's House at Fitchburg State University. Now this was complete, you were talking about this before we came on the air and I was completely surprised because I grew up in that neighborhood mm -hmm. and uh, didn't realize that if, at this point Fitchburg State had bought the house, the, the, uh, the building and the, land, yep. the little yard it sits on. But it also is, butts up to um, what was what is also a Fitchburg State um, property, Cedar which Street, I grew Street. up calling the old ladies' home. Mm -hmm. right. In fact, Cedar it was, was well, chiseled it, into the ground. Everybody called it yeah. the old ladies' home. Yeah, and, the then, and then one. it was the Cedar Street home, and now yes. it's, um, do they yes. call it the Cedar Street home now? What do they call it now? They do call it the street, Cedar Street house. Okay, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is now, for anybody who knows that, the Cedar Street house is on Cedar Street and the, the corner of Cedar and Orange, and this house is going a block over on the corner Highland. of Highland and yes. Orange. And yes. it's a beautiful house with turrets. And yes, it's gorgeous. So it tell, is. tell me about that. Well, um, we're still working on that house in some sense, trying to find out a little bit more about the history. I think many of us believe it probably was an H.M. Francis design as well. But so far, we haven't been able to prove that that is the case. Huh. The reason we think it is is because it is this lovely Queen Anne Victorian home. And in the 1890s, that was one of the preferred styles of the architect. Another reason we believe it is is because many of the homes in that neighborhood, private homes and uh, public buildings in that neighborhood were also H.M. Francis. Yeah designs, so that's like another clue, but the Historical Society owns hundreds of architectural plans mm -hmm. by H.M. Francis and Sons. Mm -hmm. We don't own this one. Oh, mm. interesting. Okay, yeah. so we don't know for sure that it is an H.M. Francis house, yep. even then, though it, there are clues that it might be. And Ellen D. Geronimo is one of the people working on trying to figure to out whether the whether or not it is. So we don't even know whose house it was from the beginning? We do. Oh. We do know that, and that's pretty exciting in and of itself, because the first people who lived there were Ivor Johnson and his wife. Oh. Ivor Johnson being a major bicycle and arms maker in the city, mm -hmm. and they moved here from Worcester. And he lived there only for two years, because sadly, when he came to Fitchburg to live, he was already kind of ill and on his way to hmm. dying. Mm -hmm. So he lives there from 1893 to 95. Hmm. And his wife lives there for two or three more years and then moves into the Johnsonia, which she had built in his memory. So we know who the early, that early mm -hmm. person was. We also know that then it was lived in by Sawyers, who owned the Sawyer funeral homes oh, okay. in Fitchburg, yeah. and we know it also was uh, lived in by uh, one of the mayors of the city. Um, uh, well, Henry Sawyer was a, a oh, mayor okay. of the city, yeah. and we know it was also for a very long time the residence of Henry, uh, Henry G. Pearson, who was treasurer and manager of the Goodnow Pearson Company, and his wife Ella. And what I found out most recently is that um, Mrs. Pearson lived there long after her husband had died. She was still, she was in residence from 1930 to 1955 by herself, 25 really? years after he died. In that huge yeah, house. Yeah, in that huge house. And then we know that in 56, the house is listed as vacant, and then it becomes the home of Dr. Quintino Rolo. Yes who is the, that's the family that the university bought the house from. Uh -huh. yes. So this house is gorgeous. Uh, you're gonna get to see the first floor because 
it is the president's residence mm -hmm. and the upper floors are for the family. Mm -hmm. uh, so we won't get upstairs, but one of the neat things about this house is that Elite Design and Construction came in and did the renovation in the house. And first they started by taking out all the good wood and redoing it, you know, taking it out, refinishing it, oh. bringing it all back. Oh. So they've used existing wood oh, I see. and put it back in. Okay. And so a lot of what you see is renovated but original. Yeah at the yeah. same time. Yeah. So beautiful craftsmanship in terms of how it's been redone. They've combined the two parlors. Uh, there were two parlors in the home. Mm -hmm. um, I know also that when, um, when Ivor Johnson died, prayers were said in the home. Hmm. Probably the body was laid Probably out there wake, initially. Wake there. Yes, yeah. and then his body was uh, transported to Worcester to the church for um, by train. Oh, so okay. um, I think of, I'll think about that when I'm there. Yeah, the yeah. prayers were said in that in well, that parlor. Now, you um, the university owns it now, yes. and it's called the President's House. Yes. So um, this is fairly a fairly new. Bob and Jean moved in in September. Uh huh. And for his final year yes. as the university president. Yes. And the new president will move into the house immediately. Wow. That's that's yep. exciting. To it have is the very exciting house. to yeah. have a president's house. Yes. And so close to the yes. university as well. Right yeah. on the campus. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh that's that's very I I'm very excited about this year's tour, I must say. It really sounds we great. All are. Yeah. I think it's gonna be wonderful. Yeah. Wow. And the tea room is at the Fay Club again was last year. Okay. In the years past we've had it at Applewild. Yes. And last year was the first year at the Fay Club and people really enjoyed going into the Fay Club. Yeah. You know that's a, a Richard Upjohn, it's a gothic uh, mm -hmm. um, Victorian and it's a beautiful building yes, in, it on is. its own right. Yeah. And they couldn't have been nicer. Um, we got, we're going to have a piano player, so if you'd oh, like nice. to come and sing yeah. along, we can do that. <laughs> and the tea is included in with in the, the ticket. the price of the ticket, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I mentioned earlier that we have one funeral home yeah. that's on this tour, and it's in Cleghorn. Mm -hmm. And I think um, many people have said over the years, Cleghorn doesn't get the attention that it needs to get yeah. in terms of the history of Fitchburg. But the Isabel and Anderson Funeral Home has been located there since um, 1928. Mm -hmm. Really? Really, right. So they've been in business for almost 90 years. The house that this funeral home is in was built in 1900, so again, a beautiful uh, building that has been recently renovated and um, still has coffered ceilings and fireplaces, et cetera. So I think, again, well worth the effort to stop by there. Don't want to dismiss our own building, right? Uh, the Fitchburg Historical Society building at the Phoenix Building. We will have, as, as Kathy mentioned, an exhibit called Home for the Holidays, which includes Christmas trees, but also includes um, the military uniforms for many Fitchburg individuals who fought in different wars. So it's a very nice, I mm. think, a very nice exhibit to come in and see. And we also will have entertainment there. The Lily Girls will perform at 11 in the morning and then again at two in the afternoon. So you want to see both of those things. Don't want to leave out the Greek church. Oh. They're celebrating their 100th anniversary oh, this year. that's great. And it's a beautiful place yeah, to I go and never visit. Been inside. Wonderful to go and see. Well worth being uh, on this tour and in every tour, I think. You know, that is one of the things I think every year you do tend to have a we church. We do have a church, you? yes. And uh, that, that is a really um, lovely tradition to have, especially because, as I said, I go by the Greek church frequently, mm -hmm. but I've never been inside, and I'd love to see the inside of it. Well, good. This is your opportunity. Yes, it is. I think, I believe they're having a fair that day, too, so. Yes, they usually oh, do. How so wonderful! That would be they nice usually too. People do. People can stop yeah. and do a little shopping. Yeah, right. Yeah. 
oh, well, this is, this is going to be a great uh, tour. They're, they're always great tours, but this is very exciting. Um, where should people look for tickets? The t I have the list of tickets. We the posters. I, I don't know if you have one on screen, but yes. oh, these no, posters are all over Fitchburg, yeah. and um, the the main places to get tickets, of course, the Historical Society. You could also get tickets at the at the Tea Room the day if if you needed to at the Fay or, Club, or ours, or, or okay. at yeah. at the Historical Society. Okay. So those are two places on Main Street that yeah. would be easy to get. Um, they're they're located now at Elliott's, Windmill Florist, Slattery's. Mill number three, DeBonis and Davin, Shacks, Homestead Primitives, and the Mayor's Office, okay. along with the Historical Society. All right, so that's um, a, a good uh, range of places to stop in and get them. And I'm sure each of those places has a wonderful sign to remind people that they are available there. Well, I, it is a wonderful um, tradition to have. And uh, 10 years, it's hard to believe it's already been 10 years since uh, it's been ten consecutive years. There may have been a, a tour once or twice previous to that, mm -hmm. to this uh, last decade. But um, the people who work on this, it's not easy to, it's not easy for the house owners, the homeowners themselves, to agree to something like this. It's, you, you have to, you have to be um, willing to let people tramp through your house, quite mm -hmm. frankly. Yeah. Um, it, but but everybody every time I've ever every any house I've ever been in, I always feel as though the people who own that house are so happy that I have walked into their house to see what a beautiful house they have, and they're so proud of yes. you know being the, um, uh, the caretakers of of a piece of history in Fitchburg. Right. Mm -hmm. They're incredibly gracious to open their doors the way that they do. And I think that um, it is true that it's, it's one of those days when we can take pride in all the architectural history of this city and the history of having um, wonderful people who live in the mm -hmm. city and who are gracious and generous in, in terms of sharing what they have. Yeah. So it's, it's an extraordinary opportunity for everybody. I mean, there's, it's a recognition on the part of the homeowners who realize that they're they're living in a piece of history. But I think it's also recognition on the part of the people who go on the tour in realizing what wonderful buildings we do have. Right. Um, it's it's a uh, anyway. It's a great opportunity. I, I think people should not miss it. And, and I it, think people are proud that people are renovating houses that yes. have such a long history yeah. mm -hmm. and that they have different ways of doing that renovation but still keeping true to the past you know so keeping as much of the past as they can but still having modern conveniences and I think it's inspiring to people to be able to see that that is re history is respected in that way mm -hmm. so that's lovely as well it really is. It, it'd be interesting also, and I'm sure everybody who, who um, all the homeowners are themselves interested in the history of their yes. homes, so yes. getting involved maybe gives opens up more to them than they right. maybe otherwise knew right. about their homes. Because everybody likes to, yep. n you know, I mean, we love going back and looking at the past, I think. We've also had some people who have lived in the homes and a new family has moved in and they've come back and seen the homes. That's oh, happened really? a couple times over the years. And it's fun too, even at the tea room, people will sit down and you know, you might have a list uh, because you know, sometimes you say, well, I can go see four hours yeah. or I can see three and I'm yeah. not gonna go see them all. Right. And someone will say, oh, you have to go. I, you can't miss yeah. this house, you know, you have to go. And they talk them into it and yeah. tell them, you know, which way to go. And so it's really quite a celebration for Fitchburg. Last year, I, I really, Main Street was really hub, you know, bouncing because yes. you had people going in the Historical Society, um, some of the galleries, uh, the Rollstone yeah. Gallery and uh, the Boulder, Boulder Gallery were open and people would be able to go in there and do a little shopping and then they'd come into the tea room and talk about what they'd seen and it was really, it made, made me think of when I was a child when Fitchburg was really a very vital Main Street and you yeah. know, you'd mm -hmm. go shopping and there were all those retail stores and it was really, a, a very exciting place to be at Christmas. That's true, that's true. You know, the ticket 
that people will get is yep. actually the brochure that gives all the information. It is. This is. And Shirley very wisely brought a map. And if you wanted to just, this is the ticket. It's a little smaller. Somebody said it's wallet size this year. And the map will be in oh, it. So it is, yeah. Oh, and and the map it's a self-guided okay. tour. We spoke about that earlier. Just, whoops, this is upside down. Oh. Sorry. Well, it's partly upside down. The ticket's mm. $20. Get a little closer, Ty. There we go. Okay, so $20 to go to and six houses six. and four public spaces. Wow. And I think the Ten important spaces. thing to remember is that you can pick and choose, you know. Yes, you can. If you feel like I, you know, maybe I can't do whatever. Mm -hmm. You um, don't have time to do them all or yeah, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Because for twenty dollars, even if you did three or four, it's still well worth the, yes. the price. But if you can get through all of them, it's um, you've really got a bargain, a real <laughs> bargain on your hands. But um, it is fun to. And what I've noticed is that I'll go into a house with my group of friends, and and then maybe two houses later, I'll run into somebody that I had seen at that yeah. house, and and we're crossing each other. Um, you know, we I talked briefly about the uh, breakfast for the bands. Uh, this Sunday, which is a great um, time for people who, a lot of people from both Fitchburg and Lemster will go to Come the breakfast together. for the bands. Mm -hmm. But also it is one of those places where sometimes a lot of alumni go mm -hmm. um, because it's the build up to the big Thanksgiving uh, day game and everything. But I find that the house tour is like that too. It's like you run into people that you haven't seen yeah. for a year. You yeah. saw them the last year at the house tour. And, um, you know, year after year, I keep running into people that, you know, it's kind of like the people that I see at the, um, the breakfast for the bands that I hadn't seen since the yeah. previous year. And that's the same thing with the house tour. I, I think I've seen a number of people who say, I always go to the house tour with this group of yeah, friends. friends. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. have a, a tradition mm -hmm. yeah. of going to the house tour. Yeah. And we haven't said this along the way, but typically we have now about 400 or 450 people, up to 450 people visiting the homes. That is fantastic. Which is why we give the map and we say, yeah. don't all go to the <laughs> same right. place at the same time. <laughs> yeah, spread it out. <laughs> Which and has worked. It's, it's really, yeah. it's worked. Yeah, I mean, in all the years that I've been going, um, there have been a lot of people, but not so many that you couldn't walk in and, and really get a good view. I do want to bring up the possibility of inclement weather. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Sometimes it is, but it's on no, no matter, matter what. what no and matter I what. think there have been times that homeowners very uh, kindly <coughs> ask you to remove your boots yes. and walk in. Right. Um, you know, with uh, socks, with your socks on. So wear so your socks. Wear good <laughs> socks and not the holy ones. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's a lot of fun. And everybody's so accommodating. I think that's the other thing. So um, the house, the an annual holiday house tour, home for the holidays, on Saturday, December sixth, from eleven to, to four. four. And at right after the house tour, the tree lighting occurs. Oh. On the upper of the common. Oh, wonderful. So if you can stay around for that, that's also a nice thing to see. Oh, that's great. Okay. So thank you, Kathy. Say, thank you, Shirley. And uh, I look forward him. to the house tour. And I'm sure if you would uh, call the Historical Society, order your tickets, you'll be glad you did. And so next we're going to be talking about the new exhibit, Global Africa, at the Fitchburg Art Museum. So stay tuned. Hi, this is Scott May, Community Access Coordinator for Fitchburg Access Television, inviting you to join FATV and share with us and the community your very own television creation. For just $20 a year, you have full access to our state-of-the-art studio and production facilities and equipment. You can join us on live production events with the FATV mobile truck. You can create and produce your very own television show or join the crew on our wide array of local productions on FATV, led by Barbara and you, and Inside Fitchburg. Contact us today at 978-343-0834, or stop by anytime at 175 Kimball Street and say hello. Fitchburg Access Television, working together 
for a stronger community. Here at Fitchburg Access Television, you have an open invitation to share with the community your very own television creation. All it takes is an idea, a few hours of training, and you can bring your program to life on FATV. For just $20 a year, you have full access to our state-of-the-art production facilities and equipment. Call us at 978-343-0834 or stop by anytime at 175 Kimball Street and make that program dream a reality. Fitchburg Access Television, working together for a stronger community. The people that I interview motivate me. And there are days that I might be very tired from working my real estate all day, and I think, oh, do I really want to do this? And I walk in here, and the lights and the camera come on, and I meet wonderful people, and voila, I'm motivated. People often ask me, 37 years, haven't you run out of interesting topics or interesting people? And there are so many interesting people. And I love spotlighting someone who hasn't gotten the recognition that I think they deserve. Your function as an interviewer is not to editorialize your opinions, but to get other, draw other people out and ask the right questions that they will, you'll get more and more from them. I'm still hanging in there after nearly 38 years. We're almost up to 38, so they'll have to kick me out because I'm not quitting. It's, it's hard, it's, it's probably, and I'm... Right. It's not familiar. It, right. it's like you, we, no. we're, we're on, oh, actually. We're on. So, <laughs> we are going to talk right now, and just, we were already talking, uh, Catherine Hunter, my guest, who is the exhibition designer yes. of the um, Global Africa, now give me the whole title, please. It's called Global Africa, Creativity, Continuity and Change in African Art. Okay, and that's what we had started to talk about. Um, I, I got to the exhibit today because I definitely, you know, needed to do my homework um, before I saw you tonight. Um, and I'm so glad I did because I, I really feel um, I, I can, you know, instead of just saying, please tell me about it and blandly nodding, um, I hope I can engage you in, in some of the conversation about it. But it's, it's a three-part exhibit, is it not? Yes, the um, exhibition has about 100 objects entirely from the museum's collection. And it's set up into three different galleries. Now, I did not realize that it was entirely from the museum. Entirely. Time. And it's to the credit of the curator, Jean Borgatti, that they've been making acquisitions and even a commission for this particular oh. exhibition. So it's very exciting because we have a nice complement between what people probably would expect for classic African art, if you just try to imagine what that brings to mind, and contemporary work um, represented by African artists or Afri uh, art African um, uh, artists of African heritage who mm -hmm. live in the United States, mm -hmm. uh, in Europe, uh, Cuba, uh, and America. It's very exciting because there's this wonderful conversation going on that really is very exciting and surprising. I, I had a, a lot of fun designing it. It was really challenging. The part, um, the fact that it was all um, a museum, everything is from the museum itself, I knew, I, I assumed the masks because for years I've seen uh, the figures and the masks from different parts of Africa uh, that were in that, uh, the long, what and the connector. The, the we connector, call it the connector. The connector. Right? Um, so I certainly was uh, familiar with quite a few of those, but the cloths, the um, masquerades, right. um, some of those things I had no idea that, and I did see a few of the things that were commissioned, I did see that this thing was commissioned for this exhibit, um, which is fantastic because it is the contemporary people who are working now. Right. Um, one of the things that struck me as I was driving home, I was thinking about the fact that there were so many objects that we consider art that never were intended to be art. They were objects that were used that were part of everyday life. Yes, and the objects that were made by skilled craftsmen or, and had a, they were cherished and beautifully made, so they are accepted as art objects now. Oh, accepted, a but I accepted. mean, when they were made, yes, right. they were not, they weren't like, we're making a piece of art here. They were making a mask to use in a ceremony because yes. this mask was needed for this ceremony or they were making um, you know, the, some of those 
anklets. Yes. Um, we have God. pictures of some. Oh, they brought okay. a lot of pictures along. Good, So good. we could start, if it, if it would be all right, if I might Yeah, absolutely. Mike, are you ready? Where is our first picture? Looking to see where it yeah, we'll, we'll look there up there. Go. There we are. Yes, okay. this is um, in the first gallery is called uh, Masquerades, Masks and Music. And it's the, as you come down the connector, you immediately see um, yeah. face to face with these terrific masquerades. And colorful. They're very colorful. And that's part of Africa, is that it's so brilliant and colorful. Um, and behind the masquerades, we actually have a short projector presenting uh, the middle uh, masquerade in performance and okay. with some music. And we also have a wonderful set of about a dozen videos people can watch that inform them about the exhibit as well. Of the masquerades, my, I think my favorite is the one on, on the right with the tall headdress around. Mm -hmm. And then red, it's an it's a, um, a, a important uh, figure of an ancient mother. And in the headdress above are all her children. And uh, she's I a terrific. actually kind of did a double take because I glanced at it and didn't realize. And then when I was reading the description, it said the children in the and the a headdress. And I looked right back up again and said, "Oh, of course, there are the children." The masquerade on your left is is from Cuba, and the pointed head suggests a spiritual component for that char for the individual that's being portrayed. The grass ruffs suggest the ancient forests. The whisk broom is just to brush away dangers or obstacles, mm -hmm. uh, and there are bells that are supposed to, again, that are part of the accessories. So it's interesting to look up close. It's a patchwork of, of uh, cotton fabric, and the one in the middle is a lot of sequins and mirrors, and there's uh, uh, feathers on the back, and that's the one that's being shown in dance. Uh, in the um, right. uh, video. In the video. Yeah. And that's yeah. some, these are used in uh, ceremonies for initiations, uh, for celebrations, uh, for burials. And the individual, when they put on their complete masquerade, transforms. Mm -hmm. And they take on a role to communicate with this world and a spiritual world or our ancestors, mm -hmm. et cetera. And you know, mostly people see the masks mm -hmm. in museums. And the mask is incomplete because you don't see the entire, entire. clothing, which yeah. could have been made of fabric yeah. or um, grass material or raffia. Uh, and one thing that's interesting is that um, all of these masquerades are actually worn by men. There's only one mask in the exhibition that's ever worn by women. And even if they're portraying women, such as the Great Mother, yeah. um, that's it's a man. always a man yeah. it, that's there. And they are trained, they belong to a society, they're taught the dances, they're taught mm -hmm. how to perform and so on. So that alone is very exciting to start the exhibition. You cannot, you just, it's magnetic. People just run right to it and it's very exciting to see that. Do we, um, do we have another, let's see, we go to the next picture. Yeah. The second gallery is called Beyond Indigo and uh, the feature is this, is this uh, replica of a slave cabin uh, that was made by Ife Franklin and it's covered with blue dyed fabric. So the, the blue dye is called indigo. And the tradition of making that fabric is called adire, comes from West Africa. And the uh, colonists uh, imported or realized that they could cultivate that plant, the indigo plant, in the south. And at one point, it was more valuable than cotton into yeah. the industry. Yeah. So this, the, and also the adire fabric and, and all African fabrics have meanings associated with them. And I was trying to think, um, a good analogy is if you see someone wearing a check on their jacket, you know it's Nike and it means just do it. Mm -hmm. Well, the fabrics often have symbols in there are communicating a message, a proverb, a story, or an intent. And that's something that we don't have except with logos in, in our culture. But in this case, uh, the artist wanted to recall the tradition from West Africa of, of having the Adiri fabric with its messages. And her story is that in making the, this um, artwork, that the stories of the 20th century in New England are part of this. The stories of, of slavery in New England, of segregation, of busing, that's part of the message that she's communicating. And if you look just to the right of the doorway, there's a, you can just see the uh, half of the uh, face of a young man. Can you see that? Just to the right of the doorway. If you imagine where the, there's a chair, the doorway, mm -hmm. and on the right edge, there's a, there's a face of a young man oh. to remind us of the story of, of the young um, black man in today's culture. Huh. 
She's a lovely artist. And in fact, we will be doing an interview with her uh, probably in January, okay. uh, which will become part of the videos. And also for, she'll be coming back to do a gallery talk. So I would encourage people to come meet her. She's a beautiful uh, person. When I find out what the date is, I will mention that in my, my right. announcements at the beginning of the show. Um, when that, which reminds me, how long does the exhibit run? It's going to be up maybe as long as two years. Oh, really? Yes, that long. Okay. And part of the reason is we were very, Nick Capasso, the director, was able to get a wonderful grant so that we have all the fourth and seventh graders in the Fitchburg schools wonderful. coming for three, for three years. Yep. They'll be seeing this show and the other exhibitions. Yep. Um, and also, it was, a, it was a lot of work for us to put this up. Uh -huh. we, we really want to feature this as um, an important part of our permanent collection. And it's very unusual uh, to combine, as I said, the classic yeah. and the contemporary. So if we see the oh, if we see the next slide, um, Mike, can we look at the next picture? Thanks. Uh, wow. We also show examples of classic Adire fabric mm -hmm. in our collection. And you may notice all the textiles are shown folded, so you only see part of it. Yeah. Textiles are sensitive to light, and part of our plan is that we will be refolding them oh, and showing okay. another part of them. Yeah. So they won't be get, get become faded right, in the duration. Right. Yeah. And these are uh, some, the one on the right is a beautiful, uh, the cassava plant uh, is represented in the, in the floral motif. But each of those blocks has a different name that would be mm. known to someone in West Africa. Mm. And um, also in the, those two cases, we have examples of metal, which was very rare. Uh, to forge it, there's a lot of mis mystery around the, the hot, the being able to make the metal melt, or to heat it, to forge mm. it, to cut it, to cast it. And so it was used as currency. You know, Africa is a huge continent. It's larger than the United States, Europe, and China combined. Yeah. It's almost staggering. Yeah, there's a you have a poster of that in the um, the learning the, lounge. The learning lounge, and that was something I learned. It's I looked staggering. at that and I said, "Good heavens, you know, there's three plus million square miles in each of the United States, of yes. China, and Europe, and Africa is 11 million plus." It's a huge continent, more than 50 countries, many languages, many many cultural traditions. And one reason why we, com, com, um, the curator Jean Bogardi, wanted to represent the diversity of cultures with what's called metal currency. Okay. And so the pieces there, whether they be anklets or collars or interesting forged shapes, they all represent currency and wealth. And if you had a large anklet or cuff, then you weren't working. You, you were um, a privileged individual. Mm -hmm. Or a metal was used for special staffs or for throwing blades that were limited to use by royalty. Oh. And so that's why the car so Jean wanted to, the curator wanted to represent a variety of peoples in Africa. So the currency was one way to do that because that would be tr that would be used from country to country. Mm -hmm. It's such a huge there were other forms of currency which are shown in the learning lounge whether it be shells, beads, paper money, mm -hmm. uh, and so on. And that's, a, that's an interesting display in addition. Right, I wasn't thinking that going from one section or one tribal area to another, the metal is the metal in, in each place. And, and so it's valuable in and, both places. Right, and it was rare. And the more that it's forged or worked into an interesting shape, the more valuable it is. Uh -huh. But we also have an, um, an unusual, unusual object in the exhibition, in that case is a large hoe, which was used by a farmer because on, farming was an honored profession. Uh -huh. And so the hoe was a, a useful tool and it was also a valuable tool yeah. because it was made of the metal. Uh, like that. Yeah. But maybe we can go on to the next, see what the next picture is. Oh, and in that same gallery, oh, Beyond Indigo, mm -hmm. we um, present other textile traditions. And the one in the middle is maybe the most familiar, it's called Kente Cloth. Mm -hmm. There was an exhibit a few years ago at the museum about that. And each of those is, a, there's probably about 12 strips of cloth, each only about four inches wide. They're all sewn together. And men will weave mo you know, yards and yards of this fabric, and then it is sewn together. And the individual patterns have in meaning. They, they have stories or proverbs, or, and what you wear is expressing your wishes or your, sen your uh, sentiment at a particular event. Uh, so it's a very, and that was considered a royal cloth. 
Uh, although people today can buy them, but very, it's a very valuable cloth. Mm -hmm. And then to the left of it is a small sample of one that's printed on, on um, cotton. Mm -hmm. So it's an imitation fabric. Yeah. Uh, and the kente cloth, however, occasionally you'll see uh, young people at a graduation, high school or college, and they'll be wearing a single strip around their neck, and it's the same kind of, of hand-woven cloth. Ah, okay. And in a learning lounge, you are able to try weaving and also uh, try on clothing uh, made of cloth. Uh, to the right and left, the one t I'll talk about the two on the right. Um, it's something called wax cloth, and they're printed in uh, Europe. Actually, now many of them are printed. Most of them, 75 or more percent, are made in China, but they're very popular. Uh, the one on the left shows uh, alphabet letters mm -hmm. because there's an interest in promoting literacy, right? And uh, the one on the right is, represents a game board with money and game cards. Hmm. And what happens is um, the uh, individuals will adopt a pattern. Uh, be, it'll become popular. They'll give it a popular name, like the ABC cloth is repeats again and again. And this is used for clothing, for wrappers for men and women as a dress or a yeah. skirt or a shoulder cloth. And, they're, and, um, it's, and so it's, it's fascinating that that type of graphic design is so popular. So it's also still coming along with the, the meaning, there's meaning to the cloth in the right. same way that the kente cloth, for instance, or the um, fabrics on the, uh, the other wall have blocks that have meaning. Right. Remember, there are so many languages and so many countries and so many groups, the, the cloth in itself uh, it becomes a language, mm -hmm. you know, because not everybody speaks the same language country to country. Yeah. And so it's something that we've lost with the Industrial Revolution in our country. We don't look at textiles quite the same way. No, that's true. Yeah. Then, so the clothing was, is really, and then, oh, this is a great picture. This is our curator, Jean Bogardi, uh -huh. who is actually in Nigeria now. She's traveling oh. on a Fulbright which is a, a U.S. Uh, State Department grant that allows her to further her study of, of African arts. And she's going to be there for a year. Wow. So she's wearing a dress made of wax cloth with a very beautiful headdress uh -huh. that was made for her. And the gentleman on your left is Chief Oscar, who came to the opening and, and blessed the uh, exhibition, the objects, and we really appreciated his doing that because it, it accepts the pride and the care with which we've presented this exhibition. Now you told me a little bit about him before the show started. Um, he, and you know, I think that was a thing when we were talking originally about the masquerade um, costumes. It surprised me. I would have thought it was always just a mask over a face and then whose ever body is, is visible. But in fact, it is something that covers the performer um, from head to toe. That's true. And, yep. and uh, th th from, you know, shoulder to, to fingers. Um, but you also said, in a way, it reminded me a little bit of what I've read about, um, like healing and blessing ceremonies of the American Indians, where th they really actually become the spirit of yes. the, what their costume represents. It's, it is true, I, um, and it's something that, um, in seeing uh, uh, Chief Oscar uh, present at, as a blessing was really very moving. I must say, people were very, as a group, we had more than, more than 200 people at the opening, and it was very calming. It was very, he had, a, it was had an incantation he was um, uh, describing. He wanted to um, share the positive experience with all the attendees. In fact, we'll I have a movie later you know, to show it you. It really would be, I, I think that would be maybe the thing we should do next because um, I saw a little bit of it um, because I think the, the main thing to keep remembering is yes. the fact that this isn't somebody who is like, well, I'll put on this costume and I'll pretend no. I'm doing this. This is somebody who's actually trained yes. and who's done uh, it, this is something that he does. Yes, he very much is transformed uh, to provide this experience for us. Like, I think the next, uh, the film may be next, if okay. we could start with that. Mike, would be happy to see that video now. Thank yes. you.
And everyone else very I think he blessed nearly everyone in attendance wow. and it was very moving yeah. I found it and the, the his, his song or the story he was telling us the words were it was very moving I felt something very special was happening for the museum yeah. it's it's a very exciting exhibit that's um, wonderful like that. now you have more. there's a third component there's the um, there's another picture I think oh okay like that. we can move All on right. to the next see what's Yes, the third gallery is called Life After Life, yeah. and the most startling and surprising object is on your left. <laughs> right. What did you think when you saw that? I just thought, I, I didn't, when I saw it before I walked into the gallery and read about what was in here, I really did not know what to think. <laughs> so I will let you explain. Right. This is a, um, a 57 Chevy that's 88 inches long, 28 inches wide, and it's actually a coffin. It's from Ghana uh, in West Africa. And the tradition there is that if you would like to be buried in a, a, an object that represents your life, it could be fruits or vegetables, a camera, uh, or in this case, it's a 57 Chevy. Yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> so that's there to, repre and to represent a unique tradition. And in the ceremony, people will be paraded through the streets, carried in this coffin. So it's a very unusual. Um, however, on the f at, to the right, we have um, a ceremonial container that represents a body, and we also have a seat that represents an honored elder, and some sculptures that represent twins or honored elders. In African tradition, there's a constant conversation between elders uh, and, the de and the departed and today. They're seeking advice from ancestors, mm -hmm. seeking their guidance, either a masquerade or showing respect by having one of these objects um, in your home to represent that you remember them and consult them in times of important decisions. So I find in Africa there's a tremendous respect for the elderly and for, the, for their ancestors. Uh, we also have a beautiful textile, you'll have to see it in person, yes. that, that represents, again, it's Im motifs on it that represent uh, symbols of um, goodwill or uh, wishes for... Um, um, well, it seemed to me there were five attributes. Yes. But what surprised me, because it was like goodwill and, I don't know, fortitude, they were all very positive except for one, and that was envy. Yes. And that surprised it's me, because I thought it would be like, oh, you know, yeah. good right. things. And, I mean, envy, but maybe it was the reality. Right, right. It's we don't go through life without feeling envious. Yes, and that's being realistic, you know, and those are in balance with other um, concerns. But can we go to the next slide? I think we have another one of, um, oh, I didn't, uh, we actually have a, f a handful more slides, but this brings us back to the masks, masquerades, yes. and music. And on the right, uh, we have the chihuahua, which we spoke about just yeah, briefly. The, the antelope. Antelope. Um, okay. Crests. The head crest, yes. And the one in front, which is um, overlapping some of the yeah. chihuahua, but uh, that was commissioned for this by an artist named Willie Cole, is an American, African American, and he um, makes a signature chihuahua called a work animal, and it's made from recycled bicycle parts. And in this case, when you look at it closely, you'll see that there's a, one bicycle seat is the head, yeah. uh, and then on its, there's a curve on the back, and there's actually another 
a bicycle or a seat on its back. So it represents uh, a metaphor for, for people, or women, with a, um, carrying a child on the back. Ah. The animals don't carry them, but people to carry their yeah. children on their backs. Yeah. And they're, off, they're paired often. There's a male and female, because in um, the Bahamian people, the uh, Chihuahua was a mythological figure who taught them farming, and farming is a noble profession. And the Chihuahua, uh, in full costume, a full mas masquerade, appears at ceremonies to increase fertility for the farmers, to make sure that there's a, um, a good harvest. And so one of the Chihuahua, a pair of the Chihuahuas have uh, antlers uh, or horns that are 40 inches tall to be tall like grains, and others mm. have curly ones, and others have animals, on, other small animals on their back. So they're all different interpretations, and we have some very good signage there to help you see that. Oh, I think the signage is, is terrific, because I did find it very, very helpful. And, and everything is bilingual, mm -hmm. too, so our, we would like our good neighbors in the Latino community feel welcome. Um, it's, and, it's, and, it, and also, this shows a good shot with our um, oh, with the, video. the videos. There's yeah. a dozen videos, so please, you should oh, have to go yeah. back. Oh, yeah, I'll have to go back because I didn't enjoy. take the time. I didn't really have the time this more, uh, this and afternoon. If we could go, there's a few more pictures, I think. Okay, Mike. Let's we'll see we'll if we have enough time. One. We just have a yeah, few minutes. Yeah, we've got a couple minutes. Oh, oh the Learning this Center. Is the Learning The oh, Magic of yeah. Mass. There's, um, Laura Howick has designed these fabulous um, metal. Um, depictions of silhouettes of masks, mm -hmm. and there are magnetic pieces that children or adults, we have seen many adults doing <laughs> this too, uh, can attach to the mask, and then uh, the child can look through the, uh, through the holes and see themselves in one of the mirrors, oh. or they can turn around and someone can take a picture, picture. of them. Oh, like that. that's great. So it's that's really great. fun. And we can tell a lot of people are having fun with that. Yeah. Let's see, there's another picture too. Let's see. We can move right we have along. the next picture, Mike? Thank you. Yes, here is uh, oh, Chief, Oscar. Chief Oscar. The wonderful, just a and fantastic. And he's in the learning lounge. The learning right lounge, there, yes. The bri brilliant yellow um, walls. Right, yeah. exactly. And if we go to the next one, yeah. please. And here, oh, this is funny. He's blessing my husband. <laughs> <laughs> my husband was more a beautiful kente, oh, kente yes. fabric in his beautiful. tie. Yeah. Is that lovely? And his, uh, was it the four square in his pocket? Yes, yeah. and the four square, exactly. Yeah. So was very, he was very nice to wear that. Yeah. And here I am, my, my girlfriend, uh, Cassandra, is receiving a blessing, um, and I'm beside her standing yeah. there. Uh, and he was very, it was very arresting. Oh, there's, there's the uh, a there's mask, the mask maker right now. Look how intent yeah. he is. It's wow. very fun. And I t the learning lounge is really fun. And I, when parents well, I just go in and participate. I think it's important to remember that, yeah, there, there is also a component for children. Exactly. And uh, I mean, it, there's stuff that they're going to be interested in seeing, but I think knowing that uh, there is also something that's very hands-on that is designed for kids, kids of all ages too. Right. Come, call me when you come to the museum next, and I'd okay. love to look around with you. All right. All right. I'd okay. love to do that. Okay. So this is, um, help me out with the three C's, but it's Global Africa. It's creativity, creativity continuity, continuity, and change and in change. African art. And then uh, I'm, I'm Catherine Hunter. And okay. Thank you very much well, for inviting me to come. thank you very much, Catherine, for coming. And I hope you enjoyed the show tonight. Uh, we'll be back next week. Bye-bye.